Roth conversions or Obamacare subsidies? An interesting case I was working on with a guy last Saturday. And it's because it's so fun to work on, we're going to bust out the PVC pipe of knowledge. Do, 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 do. PVC pipe of knowledge. This is fun. This is what makes my job so freaking awesome because I get cases like this that just... It's just fun to think about. It's fun to work on. He said I could use his numbers. Obviously, you don't know who he is. We're going to call him, uh, we'll call him Morton. Morton, uh, Craig Morton. Remember the, uh, the quarterback for the Broncos? I think it was also with the Cowboys, too. Morton Kondracki. Remember him, a political guy with, was he with uh, Craig Barnes? Craig Barnes. Was Fred Barnes or was he with uh, John McLaughlin Group? I think it was a McLaughlin Group. But anyway, we'll call him Craig Morton, so we'll call him Craig Morton. All right, so we got a case here. My man is 55 years old, all right? He needs about $125,000 a year to live on. That's what his expenses are. He doesn't, he just is a, I want to say a frugal guy, certainly not miserly, but they just don't spend that much. $125,000 is a lot. Yeah, not when you got this guy's net worth, I'm telling you. Um, and so our question is like, he won't, he needs to get Obamacare um, and his wife had some pre-existing conditions, so MediShare is kind of out of the question. So we need to get some Obamacare once he's done working. And the question is, how can he keep his income low enough to qualify for the Obamacare subsidies and at the same time mitigate future taxes? And that's kind of what we're working on right now. And uh, we, you know, we talked this through, came up with, a, I think, a great strategy that hopefully implements. We shall see. Hopefully you all can hear this. Got the mic on. All right, so what we've come up with, I said, basically with Obamacare, we did the healthcare.gov you know, C plans. And we say, if you keep your income below a certain threshold, uh, in this case, I think we're saying 50000 a year. You'll save about $1,000 a month. That'll be your premium credits for Obamacare. $1,000 a month times 12 times 10 years because 10 years he'll be 65 and he'll be on Medicare. So he'll save $120,000 in Obamacare premiums by keeping his income below a certain threshold. All right. Now, how does he keep his income below a certain threshold? Well, he has $2 million in a brokerage account. We'll just say VTI. It's not all in VTI, but basically VTI because we know VTI has no uh, capital gains and very little uh, limited dividends, but there will be some dividends. I mean, it's still gonna be, you know, if VTI has got a 2% dividend, what's that, 4,000 bucks a year, is that right? 2%, no, it'll be uh, $40,000 a year if it has 2% dividend. He actually doesn't have all in VTI, he's got some, a lot more Ber Berkshire, which is smart. But we're just gonna use this for example, we're gonna pretend there's no dividend. Yeah, we, we didn't in the reality, but just for here, I wanna be simple. So here he's got a cost basis of a million bucks, a million dollar cost basis, $2 million is a fair market value. All right, so in a Schwab account, he can go in there and sell shares at specific identification, at the life of last and first out, at highest cost basis, and all that. So what we're going to do, we're going to need, we're going to sell basically $125,000 a year of his basis, right? We're going to do that for eight years, and that'll be a million bucks. So that'll be, this will be zeroed out after eight years, because that's what he needs to live on, $125,000, bucks. right? Now, if he sells $125,000, it's all return of principal. So none of that's taxable. Right? None of it's taxable. So in this case, he won't have enough money to qualify for Obamacare premiums, except he did have enough dividends. I think it was, what, 2% on 2 million is 40,000 bucks, right? Because a million times 2% is 20,000 bucks. Yeah. So $40,000 of dividends. It wasn't quite 40,000 bucks because he had most in Berkshire. But anyway. He had enough dividends and capital and uh, interest income to get him above the Medicaid threshold, all right? But we don't want to start going crazy because we also want to make sure we get a, we keep our income low enough to get the Obamacare subsidies. So if he did this, it looks pretty good. You're like, yeah, I, I like that. We take $125,000. Now, year nine and 10, we'll have to revisit, but for the next eight years, it's good. He gets uh, Obamacare premium credits, about save about 120, maybe even more if we could keep his income low enough for sure. But then we said, well, why not do, if you're going to do that, why not do a little bit of Roth conversions, man? Because if you can go up the thresholds to say $60,000 a year, maybe $70,000, $80,000 a year, 70, something like that. You know, we got, we'll just say for simple we're going to say $20,000 of dividends. So you can convert $50,000 a year, essentially, right? $50,000 plus your $20,000 of dividends, that'll put you at $70,000, right? And so $50,000 we can convert, we'll still save $120,000 of, uh, of Obamacare premiums, but now we're going to start converting $50,000 a year for the next 10 years. That's $500,000 of his IRA that's being converted, which means there'll be less RMDs, less taxes for the widow and whatnot. A pretty good strategy. 
But then I said, what if we actually just went up the, and I'll show you something here in Wright Capital. What if we just went up to 12%, 12%. So what we're going to do is we're still going to live off our cost basis, all right? Living off our cost basis, but we're going to convert 12% a year. And that would be roughly, given his uh, dividends, about 100,000 a year or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But about 100,000 a year is what we're going to convert. What happens in this case, he will lose... The hundred twenty thousand, and I didn't actually compare how much taxes he saves from doing ten percent Roth conversions to not doing a Roth conversion. I don't know, but in this case, with a twelve percent Roth, even if he loses his ACA, which he will, because he'll have about a hundred thousand dollars of Roth conversions, which means he'll lose his ACA premium credits, he'll lose hundred twenty, but he's going to save seven hundred thousand in taxes over this guy here, and that will save some amount of money of taxes from this. I don't know. I just don't know how much. I didn't do it. So he'll come out net 580 from that. Isn't that crazy? I said, man. So the so this is a question. We could have him living, and then he could also live on, if he did this right here, he could also live on some of his capital gains and still be tax-free because he's still in the 12% tax bracket. But we got it. If we're, so if we're not going to do any Roth conversions, in this case, we don't do Roth conversions. We just keep it over here. We're living off part of our cost basis, but part of our capital gains could be tax free because you're still in the 12% tax bracket. That's a pretty good strategy, too. You're living off your capital gains, which is tax free because you're still in the 12% tax bracket, and you're showing enough income to qualify for Obamacare, but not too much to lose your premium credits. That's a pretty good strategy, too. But it wasn't anything like this right here where you're living off your basis and you're just converting for basically you need the money to live on, you're living off your basis and you're converting 12% a year. Now for those last two years, what he could do is he could pull some of that Roth money out. There'll be 63, 64, 63 and 64. He still needs some money to live on. Assuming his basis is zeroed out. Now it's all long-term capital gain. He could sell some long-term capital gain, right? Live off his Roth and go back to getting Roth, Roth uh, Obamacare subsidies. Anyway, it's a wonderful strategy. I just, uh, anyway, so that was about my take. We ran these numbers. And the hard part is to say, which is going to be the best? I think this one is the best right here. Doing Roth conversions, even though you're losing your Obamacare. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Check this out. Here's how much we're converting each and every year right here. All right, there's a conversion amount. So the first two years, because he still has a part-time job, uh, he's going to make 40000 his first two years. We're going to convert basically 80000 a year to put him at the top of the 12% tax bracket. And then after that, we've got no part-time job. We're just literally living off his right here taxable account. You can see living off his taxable account, and we're converting 124, 130 to keep him at the top 12% tax bracket. And you can see withdrawal from tax deferred is just the amount of money we're converting. Withdrawal from tax-free account, well, we're going to withdraw a little bit, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to withdraw from tax-free. You can see the taxable account balance is going down. His taxable account is $2 million bucks is going down. His tax deferred balance is down to zero by the time he's uh, 65. So look at that. By the time he is on Medicare, no more money in the tax deferred account. It's all in taxable, the brokerage account, and, and Roth. That's a wonderful place to be. So again, all that conversion is gone. No RMDs, no nothing. And here's what it looks like to fill up the top of the 12% tax bracket. Again, we're living off his principal, all right, off his brokerage account. Doing Roth conversions to fill up the top of the 12% tax bracket. By the time he's 64, there's no more money at tax deferred. It's all in Roth. And then he's living tax-free while he's on Social Security and off his Roth and off his principal. And now he's got no, you can't see this, but right there, that's where the taxes are, right there, right there. Hardly, let me show you what it looks like if we don't do Roth conversions. So here's not doing any Roth conversions, basically living off his brokerage account. And because he's living off his brokerage account and he's keeping himself in the 12% tax bracket, he doesn't pay taxes at all until he hits RMDs. Now RMDs, look at that kick in. He's now you know halfway into the next highest. He's well within the 12%. Now he's halfway into the 22. And when he dies, his wife is a widow. She's in the 24, soon to be 28. Who knows? Kamal will probably make it 100% tax bracket. See how that works? So look at that. Look at the difference there. See nothing on this side, loss over this side. And then you can see we're just for these next 10 years, basically eight, nine years, we're filling up to 12%. And then there's nothing. I know you can't see that. But there's nothing on that side. It's crazy. Well, let me show you the effective tax rate. Check this out. This is the effective tax rate with, uh, I think this was doing 10% uh, Roth conversions. I can't remember. But let me show you what it looks like when he's not doing it, when he's doing 12% Roth conversions.
right there. Look at that. Look at that. Nothing. He pays again taxes for the first eight years and nothing. Isn't that crazy? And here she is with the widow's tax trap big time without doing any Roth conversions. Her income drops by half essentially, but her taxes go up by 10,000 bucks. Look at that, man. She had 222 uh, right here. Uh, well, actually right there. She had $420,000 of income. Or I should just drop by half. It dropped by $90,000. Her income drops by four twenty dollars to three thirty one, dollars and yet her taxes went up by $10,000, oh, actually $11,000. Tell me that's not nuts. That's the, the widow's tax trap right there in a nutshell. Check, I mean, that's crazy, right? Let's keep going. And here you go, the taxes with the Roth conversions are literally nothing. I mean, this is her first year of being a widow, but not much. So she has all this uh, income right there. 228,000, no taxes, 218, no, I mean, this is future, it's inflated, but still, look at that. Oh, I love it. Probability of success is basically the same. They're leaving a little bit more assets without the Roth conversions, but that's assets is still to be taxed to his kids and whatnot. They don't have kids, but that's still be taxed. That's all, they don't have kids, but that's all tax free. That's all tax free. So, I mean, there's not really much of a difference here because at the end of the day, um, yeah, they're leaving less money. They don't have any kids, so it doesn't really matter, but still, this is tax free. So if his wife lives beyond what we're saying, he'll sell more tax free money or he does, by the way, too. So not much of a difference in terms of doing Roth conversions or not. Same probability of success. 8485 is fine. And trust me, um, we had him spend a lot more money than he thinks he ever will. So it is going to be in the high 90s, uh, given what he's really probably going to spend. But I like to use a worst case scenario. And let's just do this last one here real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this is the drawback to do the Roth conversions. He's going to be paying upwards of 50,000 a year in taxes for the next 10 years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine years. And, uh, and then that sucks because he's going to be paying those taxes. If he didn't do the Roth conversions, I don't think I got the grant. If he didn't do the Roth conversions, he's hardly paying anything in the front next nine years. So it's really just a matter of pay, pay now or pay later, but pay now and save seven hundred thousand dollars of taxes or pay later and get one hundred twenty thousand dollars of obamacare premiums but lose seven hundred thousand dollars of taxes it's a in my opinion it's a pretty simple scenario to say no nah, let's pay now and keep the taxes because those taxes that's money you could spend for you to have fun and don't let the government spend it unless you have fun now anyway, but there's no definitive answer and i told him you know my man uh, what do we call him craig morton I said craig after you play for the denver broncos and dallas cowboys you know, you might say, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this strategy. That's okay. But he's got lots of strategies all because he had that brokerage account. As I was talking to a guy today, all in the IRA money. There's nothing they can do. We talked Roth conversions. That, you know, it's a little bit beneficial, but not much. They're just, there's just not much. They, I mean, they're, they're fine. Trust me. They're like, yeah, we got to pay taxes. We got the money. But, and he just had everything S&P 500 his whole life. The guy's crushing. You know, there's not much he can do. And he's, trust me, he's going to be just fine. My man here, though, because he has a brokerage account, He's got more options. That's just a fact. I mean, both these guys will be fine, but man, options are good. Anyway, love your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Fondle and crush the like button. We'll see you.